What's going on, y'all? Appreciate you guys for stopping in. On this episode, I'm speaking to my mama, the one and only, my mom. Shout out to you, mom. Appreciate you for bringing the value that you did, the knowledge that you did, and hopefully you guys are able to take something from this. We speak a lot of things like being a grandma, what it's like to struggle, what it's like to be happy, and most importantly, how to deal with domestic violence. You know, if that's something you're interested, please stick through the entire episode because the entire thing is just straight up knowledge, old school knowledge, 1975 knowledge. All right. So thank you guys once more. And I'll see you guys in a second. What's up, man? How you doing? How you doing? Hello world. How are you guys doing? This is my mama. This is my mommy. Special mama. I don't know what this happened. Yeah, this is my mama. We're doing a little, uh, kind of like a little podcast today. I don't know what it is that we're going to speak about. But we're going to speak about something. Just kind of anything, you know. Um, we'll roll with the punches. Yeah, we're just going to go with it. Um, yeah, me and her, we, we kind of sat there once upon a time. And we, we said that we were going to do a little podcast and just... Speak is something we don't really do too often through our regular day life. And maybe we can speak on that. We do and by phone mostly, but not like sit down next to each other and talk. Yeah, we don't we don't talk actually like sit there and like speak about you know important stuff. Right. But um, yeah. So maybe I don't know. Introduce yourself. What's you know? Hi everybody. My name is Diamante Morales. I am Jonathan Maldonado's mother, mother of three, wonderful adult males and female and my grandson JJ that's right my pride and joy that's right how do you how do you like being a grandma I love it it's good yes yeah the moment I found out I was shocked of course um you know just because you guys were young and stuff but I embraced it because uh I remember um I was like actually the first one to make my mom a grandma and I was scared to tell her because I was a teen mom, of course, and that was very hard to tell her. But um, I caught the courage and did it, you know. And so when you guys told me, I felt like, again, wow, you guys are young, but you was out there on your own and you had your own place already. And, you know, it was just, um, it was meant to be, you know. And I wouldn't change anything about it because he's just amazing. That's right. The boy's a genius. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if y'all seen him, but uh, I usually put him on like the channel. If not here, probably on the other channel, like the gaming channel. He loves games, Apex and things like that. He likes gaming. It's his thing, I think, because of me. But uh, yeah, he definitely yeah, he does his thing. He took after daddy for sure. Yeah, I hope he keeps doing his thing too. He's been doing all right. Yeah. He's definitely been getting a little better with his little communication skills, playing with people. And um, yeah, right now he's with, with my sister. Over there, he told me not to pick him up. He said, <laughs> He's "Don't pick me up." Enjoying his summer with his aunt. Hey, before school starts, he gotta do what he gotta do. Yeah, man. Get those days in. That's right. But um, yeah. Um, so like, what's it been like as a grandma for you? Like, what what has been the best experience? You know, as a grandma. The best experience with JJ is just seeing his uh his humor his intelligence he's super bright like he teaches me stuff sometimes at his age is ironic but like he's really bright man um i love that he's into reading books game boards and you know he'll sit there and tell you like come on grandma play this with me and like who could tell him no <laughs> like i love you know taking him to the theme parks uh coney island to take him fishing uh, we haven't did the pool this summer, but I want to take him out to the pool and have a lot of fun with him. Um, in general, just demonstrating him a lot of love, attention, and, you know, he's just super. That boy is super. I just love him. Yeah, you know, he's know. the best. I don't know. I, I, sometimes I just feel like he's just growing too fast for his own good. I don't know. He, he's just a genius, I think, in my eyes. And I'm not saying it just because I'm his dad. That's just, I don't know, he's just super advanced. And wait, uh, I think he got, like, the mentality of, like, a seven-year-old right now. He sure it's, does. It's, it's crazy. It's I think, crazy. too, that goes hand-in-hand hand with his parents. You know, you guys are amazing with him. Um, you know, you stay on top of him. 
His mom is amazing with him. She teaches him so much. And it's like the boy keeps learning more yeah. and more and more. Every day he just learns something like, else. Yeah, he's, he has like a high IQ, I believe. Now, the thing age. is, like, you explain something to him one time, and he'll maybe ask mm -hmm. you one more time. But after you explain it to him, he'll, like, recite it for you word for word right. afterwards. He and it's just... I don't know how he absorbs he it. He was reading a book, and he's like, Grandma, can you read me this book for that time? So I'm reading it to him, but no, it ends up that he's reading it to me because he knows every word on the pages. And I'm like, JJ, is Grandma going to read the book for you, or are you going to read it to me? <laughs> so that's how that night turned out. He read me the whole book, and he corrected me on it. Yeah, so, he memorizes the book. He cheats. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. He don't know how to read. He just memorizes the book. Yeah, he's just amazing, man. Yeah. And I'm still looking forward to many, many more years with him. And, you know, with God's grace, um, I'll be able to do that. Always putting my health before anything and praising God, you know. Yeah, that's super important. Yeah. Staying healthy, baby. Yes, yeah, sir. Because we're supposed to be lasting to 100 years old, so that's how long. Let's see. Yeah. We have 107 in the family. Yeah, you we know, just had 107. Song. What was it? She was my great aunt. Yeah, her great aunt. 107. Mm -hmm. You guys can make it, too. Yeah, it's possible. Sir. 100 is the number. Um, how's your summer been so far? It's been good. It's been good. I can't complain. You know, um, still want to put in a lot of things on my calendar to do. And, you know, summer just started. So we got to plan ahead, of course, and make sure we're able to afford those fun things we want to do and get out there and do them. Or yeah. something, or something you want to do, you've been wanting to do, that you haven't been able to do? Go to Virginia, see my son. Oh. Uh, yeah, Bebo. Mm -hmm. You guys, uh, yeah. Well, you before this one, I gotta put out the other one first, so you guys will see who we're talking about yes. in the other one. And if you did it, then I won't tag the link right, right up there somewhere. And um, yeah, no, nah, yeah. that's my brother, super dope guy. Um, yeah, he's in the in the military at the moment, doing his thing. He says he wants to do 20 years, so. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Power to him. Yeah. I mean, the longer the better, I think. But um, yes. I hope he, he sticks through it. It's like in life, you got to find something that you're passionate about. Because if not, you get stuck in the same situations, um, the same scenarios. And they get tired. They wear out. And it's like, you know, you're not fulfilling life like you should. You're not putting in your all. So I'm glad that he went and took that career path for himself. And I'm glad you are doing what you're doing and you love it and you're having fun with it. And if it's not what you want to do right now, I'm sure you have, you know, you're going to go later on and do what you really meant to do. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, and same for your sister, you know. But I'm um, super proud of all three of you guys and I wouldn't change anything for the world. That's right. No, I think everybody's doing their thing. Everybody's Yeah, y'all make me focused. happy. Believe it or not. <laughs> That's good. That's our job. And I love going to your house and, you know, just getting away, visiting you guys. I never thought I'll see the day that that'll happen, actually. Like, you know, a lot of um, my friends and stuff is like some of their kids still live with them and they're adults already. And, you know, it's like they want them out. But I was the opposite. I didn't want my kids to leave my house. I actually cried, you know, when each and every one of them would leave my house because, you know, I always felt like you know I love my kids that much I have a passion for them and it's like you know parenting never ends and it don't matter how old they are you know you always worry you know you always want the best for the kids and stuff so when I'm able to go to each and one of their houses and stuff still gotta go to Virginia though to see Fernando <laughs> um, you know it just feels good that you know they embrace me and they welcome me to their home and it's just an amazing feeling you know getting out and seeing my kids doing their life, you know, on their own now. And at a young age, I really, really commend every one of them. Yeah, man. Start young. You gotta start everything young, man. You gotta get everything out the way early. And um, afterwards, you'll regret it or you won't. Okay. But I think you should just as long as you're doing, start when you're able to. You're doing everything right. You should have no regrets. I have no regrets in my life, you know. I try to live my life stress-free. Uh, I'm always laughing. I enjoy happy times and celebrations and stuff. Um, you know, life is too short. You just got to live and learn and, you know, roll with the punches. And, and you know, family. Family is everything. Family is like, you know, how you call that? It's like the core of, of your joy, you know? 
Yeah, man. You don't got nobody else if you don't got family, doggy. Yeah. I mean, it's cool to be friends and all, but it, I don't know. Family is more important. You always got to lean back with family. Yeah. Most trustworthy people. <laughs> um, so, let's see. What's question number one? Now that you guys got to get a little background. What is question number one? Hmm. Shoot. What do you want to do, for, like career-wise, like for the rest of your life? What is it that you would um, want? Like, what what makes you happy? Like, what is it? What type of career path do you want to follow? What what's something on your bucket list that you've never done before? Just what's your ultimate goal as of right now? Like, what's something that you like focused on? I love to work. Um, since I was able to work, um, after you guys were at an age where I could like leave you home alone. You know, and I was able to work, or I always had somebody to watch after you guys. Um, I always enjoyed the field of work. Um, I went into the health path, like, you know, a career with health. Uh, I did CNA and all that, and I wanted to pursue it more like in registered nurse or medical, because I love it. I love helping people. Um, I cannot see somebody in distress and not do something about it. Uh, it's just like I, my brain just kicks into gear and I, I would want to help that person. I cannot see somebody like, you know, screaming out for help and I, I'm there and I don't do anything about it. Um, I did that for a little while. I was a CNA and then I went into bus driving. That's passion number two of mine. I really enjoy it. I love with them being with the kids. I love my routes. I love, I understand it very well. And, um, I'm a very um, responsible driver on the road and you know I took my job seriously and if there's somebody on the bus that didn't agree with my kind of work I would just you know have them get removed off the bus meaning like a co-worker of mine or whatever because um, that's not a game you don't play with other people's lives and you know I took it very seriously and uh, ongoing I'm currently you know on hold with the busing right now but if I pursue it further, um, I enjoy being a bus driver, but I also like the health field, so I would probably go into medical or nursing okay. in the future. Okay, and that's still, so that's something you, you actually want yes. to keep doing? Okay, mm -hmm. oh, that's good. I love saving lives and helping others. That's good. Save lives, help others. That's the best. Yep. Make sure everybody's good. Uh, a, a true nurse that's what that is there yeah um so by when do you think that that'll be possible a couple years two I years say so. two years like a I year i say so yes and, and where do you have anywhere specific plan um i love my new york <laughs> but i don't know yeah. i'll leave it i'll leave it um up in the air for now Leave it in the wind. She doesn't want to... I don't think she wants to go to PA. I don't think uh, she wants to move. But... A part of me does, and a part of me doesn't. Um, I'm a New Yorker at heart. That doesn't mean that this is where I want to, you know, remain at for the rest of my life. You know, because I'm mostly lonely, and that's not a good feeling. Yeah, no, that's not a good feeling. I mean... Depends who you are, because me, I like being by myself. I like isolating myself. I like being in my room and my thoughts. I think we, we have that in common then, you know, because yeah. I, I like being by myself. I like being in my thoughts as well. But meaning lonely is like you guys um, are out there doing your own thing. I don't want to, like, just go somewhere because you guys went there and knowing that you guys try to get away and then I'm like coming behind y'all, oh. you know? Oh, but, the, the mother <laughs> guilty thing. I got you. Uh, I don't know. I know what you mean. But I also got to, you know, see the world some more. Like, I want to travel. Oh, I haven't been to Florida. That's something that it, it's on my bucket list. Yeah, I'm going to Florida in like a month, but it's only for like four days. Four days is better than no days. <laughs> yeah. Now we got to take a trip out there sometime. Yeah, I would like to do that. Go to Virginia and, you know, maybe Hawaii one day. Just, you know, some part of the Caribbean. and Maybe next year we'll start traveling a little yeah, more. Yeah, take a nice cruise. I haven't done none of that. So. 
Yeah, no, we definitely got to start traveling, going out to different places. It's just I think just driving. It's just that the flight takes up so much money and all this other stupid stuff. I just think driving is the best way to go because mm -hmm. you don't got to be where you at, man. I'd rather drive places. You should be a bus driver. Man. Nah, I'd rather be an Uber driver. Mm -hmm. I could I could do the same thing with the camera in the front, mm -hmm. but it then just speak At, to people. Just speak to people. Yeah, but um, yeah. No, yeah, we were talking about um, like being by ourselves. I don't know. I think those are called introverts. Like I've been looking into it, mm -hmm. and um, like that's something that I've been speaking to people about, like being introverts, like little tips for people right. that are introverts versus extroverts. Extroverts are just more people that are like out there. They put themselves out there a lot. Yeah, and like a they're lot. very comfortable around any setting. Yeah. And you see me, like I'm, I'm only comfortable with like the people that I know. I'm not gonna be comfortable going on stage and just telling everybody to shut up and mm -hmm. you know like I'm not comfortable with that I will be once I I'm comfortable in that environment right but as of right now I could consider myself like an introvert I, I just I prefer to be by myself it doesn't Same bother here. me to be around people I just prefer to be by myself right and um, it's like a saying I'm gonna say it in Spanish like they say solo la hace solo la paga <laughs> like you know it's sometimes best it pays all to be by yourself you know and you know, then again, there's times you wish to be around people, but you choose and you pick and choose who you want to be around, basically. Yeah. Um. What are like What are the downs from like for you being by yourself? What What are the cons of you always thinking in your head and being by yourself and things? The cons are that your mind travel to that place you don't want it, wanted to travel to. Yeah. Uh, start getting a lot of memories and my hands is like good memories memory memories I wish they never died out basically you know um, like I was very very close to my mom all my life and you know she was like my everything to me and I appreciated her and you know she was taken away too soon she passed away at 52 years old very young and you know me being 44 is like, you know, I gotta live my life and enjoy it and do some more because that's what she would have wanted. Um, you know, another con is missing out on some family events and, you know, things you can't make it to on time or, you know, it's just like everybody has their family and they're expanding and, you know, sometimes, like I said, the memories take you there. You wish you could do those things. But things have changed and times have changed. Mm -hmm. um, um, work, you know, when I don't work, I miss it and I get in my feelings because I miss my routine, you know. But I'll get back to that. Yeah. yeah. Um, for for me, like the like the bad of like always like being by yourself and thinking to yourself is like I get overwhelmed a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, like I think about like I constantly like think of like video ideas or like new project ideas mm -hmm. like if you look at my phone if you look here I have uh, all of these uh, videos so all of these are like the podcast videos that I have right like see week one all this breakdown you stay busy See week two, I have all of that. I need to get into writing because, um, week three, like I also want to start writing a book. Four, you want to write a book? I do. I was speaking about earlier. Um, yeah, now nah, I think that's a dope way to express yourself. Like, see, for me, it's that, but through music, for you, it's that through writing. Like, we all have our way. Like, some people are cool with cameras, some people go with writing, some right. people go with speaking, some people are good with just listening. And, uh, some people I think are I'm best painting. at writing, and, and that's how I would get into my inner thoughts deeper, and you know, like yeah, I get my ideas, and I don't grab a pen and paper and put it down. Yeah. So like when I think about it, it's like, wow, what was I thinking about? You yeah. know? So I do need to start writing stuff down, and you know, saving my notes and work from there because. I feel like I really want to put a book out. Yeah, no, that's dope. Um, I think writing is. I don't know, it's crazy like what writing could do for you because like for me, it allows me to organize my thoughts mm -hmm. in, a, in a way that I can't do it in my head. Like, I could speak to a video, usually like if I don't want to forget something that's like, super important, I'll 
I'll record it. Like I look at my, or I just whip out the camera or whatever. I just record it, and I go back to it later on that day as a reminder, and then I'll write about it. But um, yeah, writing is definitely something that I found out helps me a lot to like organize my thoughts and gather my thoughts. Right. Something that I got was that um, the whiteboard. That whiteboard that yeah. I have a whiteboard in my room. I'm able to just put not my to do because like my to do's on my phone, but mm-hmm. just reminders, everyday reminders okay. of like you know hard work, consistency, patience, and things like that. Right. Just on the board, just to kind of remind you when you get overwhelmed, like it's okay to to feel that way because this is your why and this is why you're doing it. So yeah, you know, I think and you know it works best for you. Yeah. So everybody gotta find something that works for them. Yeah, right? I think it, yeah that comes down to like self awareness, just finding out what makes you tick and what it is that you actually truly enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you should you should all do that. I think yeah. it's super important. I think it's important as well. So what is it that um you that you want to write a book about? Like the main topic, like family, just experiences. Um, what you? That's where um my idea like kicks in. It stems from that, but then again, I don't want it to only be about that or like per se like. You know, because I had a lot of trauma in my life from childhood to even to today, I would say. You know, this life events have been traumatic, but I don't want to keep it all about that. You know, I want to keep it happy and interesting where the, the reader gets, like, intrigued by the story and wants to continue reading on it. Um, I don't want to also spoil it, so yeah, I'm not going to say it all. I think one of the best best ways to go with it is kind of find a way that you could inspire somebody else that has gone through what you've been through um mm-hmm. i think that that would probably be like the best way so you know obviously you know that's first, a good, good idea first half of the book is just you know what you've been through and things like that um also too like awareness to, to young people having children and at a young age like teen parenting is not easy it's not easy at all and um you know, you can't fall back and depend on your parents because that's not their obligation. So, you know, I was a teen mom and it, it was hard. It was really hard and I took a lot of loss with it. Um, but, you know, it's just, I want to help somebody out there. And if I could help one person by sharing my story, you know, I want it to, to be written out well and expressed well where I'm not like, you know, putting nobody down in the process because, you know, there's men and women out here that they do have, un- you know, unsafe sex and there's a- also, like, illnesses behind that and stuff. So, not only about getting pregnant, it's also about taking care of yourself. Yeah, yeah, all of that, all around, Yeah, I think is super important to try to be safe, uh, exactly. protected, protected like, sex. Take your time in life. Don't rush to be an adult because... Adulting is very hard. Um, everything's on you after that. You got a, you know, a lot of responsibilities. You know, enjoy your your childhood and you know your teen years and stuff. Adulting is hard. It is. It is. Yeah. You don't you don't understand that until like you go through it and it seems like right now you might be okay or you're good because of your relationship with your parents or whatever mm-hmm. it is, but. It's hard. It's not easy. It's definitely doable. Mm-hmm. But just be prepared to kind of deal with everything on your own. Just losses, wins, relationship issues, relationship everything. Relationship issues, yeah, exactly. Everything. Because even uh, like if you're in your 20s and stuff, and you know, you got to also analyze each other um, when you're with a significant other. You have to analyze that too because sometimes you think you're happy and you're not and you know, you go through a lot of stuff, through a lot of emotions. Um, next thing you know, you're pushing your 30s and you find yourself in the same situation. And it's like, you know, what am I doing in this relationship? What do I want out of it? You know, it's life is hard, man. Life is just hard in general. Yeah, you just is gotta hard. find that mojo. <laughs> I, I, I read this thing that that said, as soon as you learn to lose life changes for you like um like as soon as you it's it's kind of like a mental thing right like where you 
as soon as you accept the fact that you will lose time and time again in your life and you're okay with that mm -hmm. then life changes for you because then you're not really beating yourself up over the laws versus kind of trying to learn from you whatever you just said right mistake. now what you just said right now it brought me back to when i was 20 something years old that i found myself in my rock bottom and i said something to myself similar to that yeah. and i finally woke up and i changed my life around so i, I absolutely understand where you're coming from yeah. No, it's cause it's I don't know. It's, it's like this weird mentality you have to have, where it's just like, okay, um, mm -hmm. I don't know. You just gotta accept it for what it is, and you can't dwell on that because dwelling isn't gonna fix anything. It's not. But looking at the lesson in the mistake will. Right. Because then for the next time you won't commit it again, and I don't know. I it's think that's true. one of the most important things in life is just like learning from your mistakes. And Absolutely. I don't know. It's the only way we learn. Unfortunately, it's just yeah. they either learn through somebody else or learn through your mistakes. Yeah, but, but sometimes it's like to you guide it, and you still want to be like uh, rebellious, or you want to think you know it all, and you know we don't know it all. Cause even at my age, I don't know it all. You know, so sometimes you just gotta like pause in life and listen to that next person that might giving you coins. You know, put in your pocket and run with it because, you know, life is hard. Do you, that's another thing too, um, like, I think it's important to have like a mentor, somebody to look up to, mm -hmm. somebody that already did it already, somebody that you could ask questions or mirror something from, copy something from. Mm -hmm. Do you have anybody like that that you like looked up to growing up or still to this day? I do not. No? I never did. I speak to my higher power, um, you know, I always, like, have right judgment, you know, that like when it came to my life, I made poor judgments, and I made good judgments, and I made great judgments, um, but I never had that. I kind of learned, not to be cliche, but I kind of learned to do the opposite of my siblings, and I was the youngest of five, and I learned a lot by observing them growing up. Yeah. Uh, it could have been good, it could have been bad, you know. But um, I kind of taught myself to, I don't want to do those things if they were negative, and I would like to do those things if they were positive, you know. Yeah, no, you pick and choose, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that's, what, that's one way that I definitely learn. Um, I watch like seeing seeing people do something um whether it, like for me like an action for example it's kind of silly but see like this video right here if i see somebody else do like a podcast like this but then there's a maybe there's here in this podcast there's like a, a, a good section mm -hmm. that we we spoke about that i chop up and post somewhere else right like those are the things that i watch out for is like how does like how do people repurpose videos mm -hmm. so that they are meaningful because right. you know like in these videos you know there's sometimes good things are sad where it's like okay the whole thing might not be interesting but the two minutes in there was interesting exactly. so then people you know take that out and then they'll put words on it repurpose it and um just to bring light to a message right you know maybe what we spoke about just now with like um uh learning through watching other people, you mm -hmm. know, you know, there's people that are that repurpose it, and they're like, "This is how you learn from others," and then right. we'll play our video. But um, that's the things that I watch out for. I learn visually. I just I watch people do something, and I don't know, it just like clicks, mm -hmm. and that's just how I learn. I learn by watching. Some people learn by reading. Some people learn by writing. But it's for me, true. it's with my eyes. I, I was self-taught for most of my life because, like, my mom didn't know how to help me with homework because she didn't know how to read or write and when I was able to learn how, how to read English and Spanish I was helping my mom and I was helping her how to spell a little bit you know she didn't learn a lot or whatever but growing up it was like I had to teach myself a lot and I was my own teacher basically when I was in school so um yeah I would ask my brother and he would help me a little bit but it's not the full-on attention that I needed you know so it was like kind of hard because I did grow up 
very lonely for the most part, even though my mom was always there. You know, it was just like I always looked for my mom and I never left my mom's sight. But needing my siblings when, you know, they wasn't around, it was very hard for me because it's like they chose to do what they wanted to do. And so for unfortunate events, they wasn't in my life for the most part, you know. Um, so, you know, life is like I taught myself a lot and, you know, to be respectful, to be honest and to be loving um, to appreciate myself and you know the um, life skills I learned from my mom were all those things and to be a very strong individual you know to to never give up on myself and you know to cook and clean and you know have a happy home like I learned all those wonderful things from my mom and you know she was just amazing she was like my number one supporter she never gave up on me she was there to listen to me and stuff it was just like um, hard when I needed help with educational things that she didn't know how to help me and you know I understood her situation so you know it would be frustrating and stuff but you know like I'll ask somebody else in the family whenever they'll come by and stuff like that so what would you suggest to somebody dealing with a situation like that that has a parent like that lives here speaks English but has a parent that doesn't really know how to I guess help them out like how would you tell them to go get help well now we have so many resources like you know the the internet like you say you know you could use it for so many things uh you know they have english as a second language um i think it's les or ELS? ELS, i think it is yeah, yeah. you know like um sit down and you know yes, have sir. patience with that person uh you know get them all the the and the essentials that they need to, to, to learn, you know, it's hard. Back then, we didn't have it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, nowadays, I mean, I agree with that. I think inter the internet it's is like everything. everything. Um, if you have an iPhone, like Siri, she knows everything in the world. Mm -hmm. You could ask her anything, and it's Gary V says it. It's like Google is your mother. <laughs> yeah. And Google is basically got all the answers for you, That's whatever true. question you have. You know, just Google it. Libraries, um, if you still have, want to use libraries, I mean, they still here, they exist. Yeah, man. Reach out, um, you know, sit down and get little papers printed out and, and help that person, you know, understand what you're trying to show them. You know, it takes time, patience, and, you know, and love. You got to love somebody to be wanted to help them, you know. Yeah. Um, what is something that... Um, that you've been wanting to do for yourself that you haven't done yet? Um, and why? Look, feel, and eat healthier. Why haven't you done it? I do. I'm, I'm working on it. I, I'm working on it. I mean, long time coming, but I should have did it. I've always been a heavy set person. It's not like I want to be this way, but then again, I'm not doing anything to help myself feel more healthy, you know, like start a workout routine and changing my life eating habits and, yeah. you know, feed my soul healthy foods and look better, you know. And I think step one to that is actually understanding your your faults, you know. Mm -hmm. I've seen people like time and time again that uh, want to work out but then beat themselves up because I don't. they don't do it or... They're like, oh my God, I've been working out so hard, but you know, I didn't lose much. But I think just kind of understanding that uh, that you're not happy with yourself and what it is exactly that you want to work on first yeah. is the first step, not just kind of jumping into it. Because it might be something mental that you have wrong with you that yeah. you know that's bothering you. It might be something physical that you can't do something. It's or, physical on my part in a lot of ways. You understand why? Because yeah. I had procedures done that, um, you know, they they hold me back a little bit. But um, when I have that full recovery, and I'm gonna, you know, go full on and try to work on myself physically, like get some workouts in and go harder. You know, like I I don't eat unhealthy. I really don't. I don't like to eat out a lot, and um, everything I eat is like homemade. I enjoy my, my cooking and I really don't trust a lot of people cooking. <laughs> That's right. No, don't trust nobody but yours, man. Yeah. You don't know what they put in there. And all these That's stuff crazy. you see on the internet, people being 
malicious and doing some nasty stuff to your food and like uh, I don't take chances with my health. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, health is definitely yeah, um, like um you know I I I just always been the biggest one out of all of us in the family and like and, you know for my sibling um I don't know if it's hereditary or what but so I did have my kids at a very young age and I had them back to back so also. <laughs> That you're supposed to um, work out, you know, once you have a child and, you know, instead, you know, that fat accumulates. But it's also like Jonathan says, it's mental, you know, you have to put your mind to it and you have to just want to work out and, and change your lifestyle. Uh, like, I, I've been, like, kind of obsessed with, like, that idea of it's all in your head. Like, I, I follow this guy named Russ. Mm -hmm. Um to me, he's just like a dope artist. He's a, a young kid. He's like 25 or 26, and he makes music. But he's he comes he came out with this he's coming out with this book in November. It's called It's All in Your Head. Mm -hmm. But knowing the way he thinks, it's I like I could kind of already tell. It's kind of like the same exact philosophy that I have when it comes to anything that it it is all in your head. Um, right. You know, I say it all the time with like judgment. I feel judgment is all in your head because. You, you care about what other people have to say. You shouldn't. Um, when... Uh, no, I'm just saying, you shouldn't care about what nobody says because nobody, you know, knows what anybody's been through in this world. You know, like, you can see somebody looking jigged out or whatever, or how you call that? And then they look on fleek or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like, whatever they say nowadays. But, um... You never know, like, within that person and in the mental, like, what's really going on there. So, you know, judgment to me is that. Yeah. The hell are you to judge anybody? Like, yeah. Um, like even even learning things, you know, I feel sometimes people put mental barriers in their heads. Yeah. Like, I can't do this or I can't do that right. because I tried once before. Right. Uh, you know, that's another thing that is all in your head. Um, being confident, I feel, is all in your head. It's just all how you how you, you gotta to love take it. yourself, man. You gotta yeah, man. love yourself, love the body that God created you in, and um, if you believe in God, um, and if you don't, just believe in yourself. You have to appreciate yourself, appreciate your mind. You gotta feed your mind healthy, positive information every day. Um, wake up happy. You know? Yeah, I try to wake up with reminders, like yeah, on my phone. Like happy. I know that. For example, like I know, I don't know if you guys can see on my phone, this is like reminders of like what platforms I have to post to every day. So you guys can see, like that's my reminder. And then um, when I unlock my phone, I don't know if you guys can see it, it's like six qualities of a strong leader. Mm -hmm. One of them is empathetic, hardworking, trusting, patient, being kind, and being accountable. So those are all like reminders. That's how Those I do. Those are all great reminders. You know, that's how I do my reminders because I use my phone the most every day. So it's kind of like, okay, every time I unlock it, I see that, like, okay, I got to post to these platforms. Right. And then when I open that, it's like, okay, for personal reminders, I just know, okay, okay. I got to be kind. I got to be this. I got to be that. Because none of us is perfect. And I think, you know, we get carried away sometimes. We get upset or this and that. And we just want to fuck everything or just forget about everything. But, right. um, uh, I don't know. I think you should just remind yourself good little positive things every day on, you know, what it is you truly are and what it is you truly want to become. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's the only way to do it is by constantly being influenced, influenced by the same thing. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, what is, um, for people that, that deal with, like, depression, uh, I'm sure you've, like, dealt with that before, um, what is it like how how have you gotten help clinically like i've seen a professional um in the doctor settings i saw i've seen a therapist um did the therapist help you i would be honest uh, it's like you're talking to yourself <laughs> it's like you're talking to yourself and you're airing all your shit and it's like um the fuck that person cares about what you gotta say because yeah. all they're gonna do is refer you to the next person yeah so it depends therapy is not for everybody but you know it, yeah. it's important that if you feel like you're depressed you really have to seek medical attention i truly do believe that but like that 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 like that philosophy of like it's all in your head it's it really just is. real like i really think that that I it's so, so real too. because 
is like she just said like for a therapist i really feel like you can figure out your own problems it's just that you beat yourself up so much exactly. over your issues that you don't give yourself the time to do it or you'll tell yourself like oh what the fuck do i know i'm no pro yeah. but at the end of the day you know yourself best and it's all in it, your head it's man. just a matter of how you, you know how you make yourself think like you know you want to think about good things you think about good things you want to think about like the uh, the fuckets? You think about the fuckets. You know, yeah. it's like you have to train your brain to be its best and mm-hmm. healthy as possible. Yeah, you definitely do have to um, train yourself. Depression does exist, though. You know, it really does exist, and it's a motherfucker. Um, you know, people take their lives behind it and all. It's not a laughing matter. Um, if you don't have the resources or you can't afford it, it's unfortunate because people go insane you know and they don't get the help they need yeah no i mean i i definitely do know that um depression sucks you know i know that it sucks to get like be abused cheated on losing somebody feeling helpless feeling like you're doing it all for nothing Uh, uh, yeah anything could trigger it yeah but um i just want you guys to understand that it's all curable, I think, in my opinion, because if you focus enough it, on... It, it, it may be curable, I'm sorry to correct you, it may be curable, but it, it's treatable. Yeah, treatable, yes. That's the word you It's want. treatable. I, I really do believe it's treatable if that's what you want. Mm-hmm. Um, if that's not what you want, then, um, you know, unfortunately, that's not what you want. But if, you know, you're really dealing with it super duper bad um, and you want the help, then it's definitely out there. And just go looking for it. Go, yeah, it's like find, go a, find it. Go find it. The core of what start, what stems your depression. Like, where does it start from? Um, you know, if it's a person, remove yourself. If it's a neighborhood, remove yourself. You know, if it's environmental things. You gotta remove yourself. Like, yeah, you just gotta, do the best for yourself. Exactly. Like, find hobbies to do. Um, Start going move to movies, to the beaches, take long walks, buy a dog, whatever works for you. You know, it's like you gotta find what works for you. Yeah. yeah. Self awareness, man. Find what makes you happy and just. It could keep be doing relationships, that. anything. Yeah, it could be. Sometimes a partner, or maybe one person broke up with you and that person got you depressed, but then you meet Prince Charming mm-hmm. or miss charming and you know that's the that's the cure for you and um you know your life isn't over and you are all happy and it was all in your head and that's what i'm trying to get at that i really do feel like it's all in your head um just don't let it get to you don't let it um take over your everyday thinking don't let it control you don't base your decisions off you being upset because you never make a good decision um it's like they say, uh, mind is the worst battle zone. You know, you fight battles in your own mind that you didn't even know you had. Yeah, so. man. It is. I, I sit there all the time, like, oh my God, why am I thinking so much? Why am I thinking about this? Or even like when you're, like, you know what the worst thing is? Like when you're with a partner and like you think of something else from like the past, but you don't want it to affect you because you're over it, but you still think about it mm-hmm. you know that i think that 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 sucks because it's, that leads to depression you know if you let it if um you know. if you let it if you're like strong enough to be able to push that aside like ah, that's the past then you know it is what it is but um you know things like that are definitely things that cause depression and just Absolutely. be careful man if you're with a partner and you know that that partner has done this or done that uh you you kind of got to be with them accepting the fact that that things like that are going to come to your head so it's just up to you to kind of decide how you want to deal with the situation afterwards but if you're not ready to deal with it then then don't put yourself in that situation because you're just constantly going to be frustrated and be upset at it because you're not over it so another thing too um you know it's like about relationship if you just got out of one give your time you give yourself time to Free yourself, mind, body, and soul. Like, you know, give yourself some time to just before you go into another relationship. You gotta give yourself some time too, because it's just like 
some of us like to go from one relationship to another and you carry all this old baggage and part of your problems you know you just gotta free yourself you know yeah give yourself time to love yourself once again and and gather you know what you want to do with your time and then move into the next relationship you know some people just want to rush things and i don't know um I actually, I think it's perfect for you to answer because I'm not a, I'm not a woman. Um, I had a comment from her. I don't want to say her name because she doesn't want me to, but she deals with like, um, like abuse and stuff like that at, in her household. Mm -hmm. And she wanted me to like speak on like a video, but I didn't want to do it like on my own because okay. obviously I don't, you know. So. Like, what would you say to, like, before we end this, what would you say to somebody dealing with, like, abuse at home, like, husbands always beating them, just constant abuse, they can't do anything, they just feel like they're stuck at home, they're a mom, and it's just, like, a super controlling relationship. How would you tell that person to deal with that situation the best way possible where she's getting hurt as least as possible or you know just yeah. how would you deal with that situation first and foremost if she's by herself and there's no children involved even better yeah if she has five. Oh wow so for that person she must you know have a date planned uh to escape <laughs> you gotta escape from this relationship you gotta leave the relationship uh report it there ain't nothing gonna happen to her. A lot of women think that, you know, something's gonna happen or I'm gonna lose custody of my children or this man is gonna be, you know, be able to reach me wherever I'm at and kill me or something like that because the worst ideas come to their head and that's what stops somebody from removing themselves. Um, I'm gonna disclose now, like, I'm a survivor from abuse and. You know, in the process of all that, I lost a lot. I lost myself, you know, and it was very hard, but I, I caught the courage to remove myself, and I, I found myself, you know, like, you have to know when it's the right time. Sometimes you got to go through so much pain, agony, resentment, and stuff, but to realize that you come first, you got to love yourself. You gotta love your children in order to get yourself out of that relationship. There's no way in hell that a man could put that much fear in your heart to um, stop you from from removing yourself from that situation. You know, you're gonna end up dead, God forbid, or you're gonna lose your children, God forbid. Um, there's resources out there that you gotta go to the nearest priest and get help. Um, you, there's a lot of resources. I don't know where the person lived. I don't know much of the person's information, but I would just tell the person to just get out when he's at work, when he goes visit somebody. You just gotta pack, not even pack your shit. Take your paperwork and go, <laughs> cause that's all you really need. Your kids' like information, your information, and go. There's shelters for women in need, and um. You're gonna you're gonna appreciate that you did that, you know. You're gonna you're gonna be so happy. Don't look back. There you go. Don't look back at all. That was the best advice ever. Um Well there you go. I mean for those of you out there dealing, guys and girls, for those of you guys out there dealing with any type of house abuse, things like that, just do your best yes. to get away you from it. Get away. You and get away. Yeah, don't look back. Don't you know? look back. Don't look back. Um thank you. You're welcome. Once more for that uh for that interview. That was probably the best part. I like that because I, like I could reuse that part for a lot of people. I think a lot of people will be able to take something from that. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. What's a what's a question that you want to ask the world today? Think think to somebody that you know. That's the best way that I do it. Um, just think of somebody you know and just ask them like. Think of like one person that. You know, you something about them really bothers you, or you really don't understand why, and just ask a question to their psyche. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Ask it's that question. It's just hard for me to word it, um, cause I'm best at expressing on paper, like I told you. What my question would be is like, what's hurting 
you so bad that you can make a change to live in a positive lifestyle. Ooh, that's a good one. There you go. Answer that question down below, and um, yeah, man, let us know your feedback about this. Let us know how you felt about this interview. Do you guys want us to do another one? I personally enjoyed it. I liked it a lot, and um, I'd like to do this again sometime sure. in the future. So, um, yeah, let us know your thoughts. Please like, share, subscribe if you're new, and yeah. Love yourself amongst all things. Love yourself because you only get one life, and life is precious. So love yourself, yes. please. Please stop complaining. You only yeah. live once. Excuses is an excuse to stop complaining. You only live once and just live it to the fullest, man. If you guys have any questions, right here, Instagram. I do my little daily vlogging, little lessons and advice there. And here on Twitter, I do. I basically just announce the projects that I'm doing, the podcast, this and that, what I'm doing. Just you guys can stay connected with everything that I'm doing there. So that's that, man. Follow me at Motivational J. Any time of the day, I'll answer to you guys. Any questions, any type of request, any new videos you guys want me to make. And yeah, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Before we go, this is my mama. Thank you for doing the video with us. You're and welcome. um that's it man. Till next time. Love. I'll see you guys later. Love yourselves. Love yourselves, y'all. As always, lend a helping hand, man. Two hands is better than one, but three is always gonna be better than none, baby. Alright. Peace, baby!